So today we're in week two of the series we're calling Base Camp, where we're talking through the main four values that we at Real Life Church have. Um, Connor did an incredible job talking through the first two last week, which are real and biblical. We see them on screen. Today we're going to talk through the, the last two, which is generous and multiplying. So first, I want us to kind of all start on the same page. So can someone give me a definition of the word generous? How do you understand the word generous? Anybody? Have you guys heard that word before? Yeah, Michaela? Offering. Offering. I like that. Yeah. Lando? Uh, The obligation to give someone something. something. Okay. Anybody else? Putting Putting others before yourself. I like that. So the definition I currently have, I love all of those, is showing a readiness to give more of something, money or time, than is strictly necessary or expected. So when we're talking about generosity, it's, it's when we give our, times, our time, talent, or resources, um, and we give more than is necessarily like expected of us. Um, so what about multiplying or multiplication? You guys are all in math. What do you guys, what's the definition that you would give me for multiplying? Ellie? Make more of. Make more of. I like that. Yeah. You said not fun. You don't like multiplication in math? <laughs> That's okay. Anybody else? Sarah? Stretching? I like that. Yeah. You're just stretching. You weren't raising your hand. But stretching is actually a pretty good explanation for multiplying. Division is, that's a little different. That's, that's the opposite. <laughs> um, so the definition we'll work with is increase or cost ingre- increase greatly in number of quantity. So it's a wordy way to say, like, it's when we expound and, like, increase our sphere of influence, increase our friend group. That's, that's the definition we're going to work with today. Um, but why are these values important? Why, why does Real Life Church of all the things we could value, why are these two of our main things that we're, we're like wanting to emulate and have in a, us as a church and us as a people? Um, last week, Connor talked about uh, a time when Jesus was talking with some of the, the religious know-it-alls of his time, and they asked him a question of like, okay, Jesus, they were thinking he was gonna, they were going to stump him, but they were like, tell us the greatest two commandments, the, the, bit, the top two, what are the ones that are most important? And this is what Jesus said. He said in Matthew 22, 36, says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, I, I love these, this verse because so many times I'll look at the Bible and I'm like, I don't understand. What is God telling me to do? Or like, I'm looking at my life. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? This sums it up. So if you're ever asking that question of like, God, what do you want me to do? It's this, love God and love people. It'll, it sums it up in two, two easy commands. So the, the value of generosity and multiplication actually really hits that last bit of loving people loving others. Um, Generosity is something that we as a culture absolutely love. Like, if you guys have seen, like, I think it's Mr. Beast is the one that's usually the one that's really generous. Is that the one? I'm Okay. Just checking, making sure. But yeah, but we watch him, we're like, whoa, that is so cool. I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I could be that generous. But there's so often, if you're anything like me, there's times that I'm like, man, I see that. But like, I don't feel like I have enough. Like, I don't have enough time. I'm so busy with school and with all these things, or I don't have enough money, or maybe you're like, I'm not old enough to be there yet or to do that yet. Um, But I want to encourage you because multiplication and generosity, it's not about something that you achieve someday. It's actually a skill that you start building today. It's It's like a muscle that you can start exercising in your own life. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so the skill, sorry, I lost my place, um, the skill of generosity and multiplication, the, the thing about them is that they teach us something. They're a skill that teaches us, um, something. So generosity teaches us to see others 
And multiplication teaches us to make space for them. And how do they do this? So for the longest time, I was so jealous of the people. I would see so many people, and they're like, Mr. Beast being one of them, and be like, well, how are they? Like, they just seem to have all the resources and all the time and all the money to be able to like give to things. And I would look at like my own life or my job or that kind of thing and just be like, man, I would either be exhausted all of the time or I would be completely broke if I tried to be generous. But something changed in me when God showed me this, this one verse that I'm going to share with you guys in a second. He, he started me on a journey. I'm not going to say I'm there yet, but he started me on a journey, and I wanted to share it with you guys. The verse is Psalms 24, 1. It says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. So everything that I was like, this belongs to me. This, like, I need to help protect what is mine. I need to hold on to those. When I realize that everything I think is mine actually belongs to God. It's not mine. I'm just managing it. I'm taking care of it for him. It helps me to open my hands a little bit because I'm like, oh, wait, this isn't mine to decide what to do with. It's his. And that second part of the world and all its people belong to him. All its people. That means me. That means you. That means that kid in your class that everybody finds super annoying or that one kid that nobody wants to sit next to. It means the homeless person on the corner of the street that we drive past. It means your sibling who you found really annoying this morning. Like everybody belongs to God. So we all matter in that. But it also, when I remember that I belong to God. I remember that he's going to be the one to take care of me. So I don't have to try to take care of myself as much. Does that make sense? Tracking? Um, yeah, so I encourage you, don't wait till the someday, till the opportunity. You're like, okay, I'll be generous when the opportunity presents itself to me. Like, if I happen across it, then I'll be generous. That's how I used to do things. And I was not generous very often, I will be honest. Um, I encourage you guys to build it into your schedule, build it into your life. So if you look at like your month, you're like, okay, this month I'm going to set aside two hours or more, whatever it is, two hours that I'm going to be generous with my time. I'll spend it with people. I'll volunteer. I'll do whatever. Or if it's even like $5, like be like, this month I'm going to spend save, I'm going to put $5 aside to give to someone else that's in need. And then you have that stored, and then you're like actively looking for those opportunities. It becomes like a treasure hunt. Like you start being like, okay, I got, I got to give this away, so now where can I put it? Where, like, and it, that's how you start building that skill. It's... Like if you were, if you wanted to start a hobby, let's, let's use like jujitsu, for example. Um, if you wanted to start jujitsu and you're like, I want to get really good at this. If you're like, okay, I am just going to wait until I happen upon a like jujitsu training place. And whenever I happen upon it, then sure, I'll take a class. You're like, okay, you might learn a few skills. You might happen upon one every once in a while, but you probably won't see the growth and the, the learning that you want to. But if you're like, okay, I'm going to set aside an hour a week to practice jujitsu, you're going to get way better over time. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, uh, yeah, our generosity also will naturally, once we, we start working on generosity, it will naturally lead into multiplication. We, it can't help itself. Once we start seeing people, it starts getting in us, and we naturally will start making space for them. Uh, right before Jesus went up to heaven again, he gathered all of his like closest buddies, his disciples, which are dis the word disciple just basically means follower of Jesus. Um, and he says this to them. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we're doing baptisms today, it's, which is awesome. I'm so excited. I was, saw all the names, and I was like, yes, come on. But this is why we do it. Jesus is like, go and 
tell people about me. Go and help people to know who I am. Help people to see and know the love that I have for them. And so how do we do it? Because I know this is something that has intimidated me for the longest time of like, how do I, how do I help people see Jesus' love for them? My brother-in-law um, just recently went on vacation with a friend of his. Um, and well, like they know each other from the gym. They became friends. They went on this, I, I keep calling it a brocation because it's just the two of them. They're just hanging out and having fun. Um, so they went on this brocation and they just like, like, while they were there, my brother-in-law's friend, like, accepted Jesus. And I was like, that is so crazy. That is so cool. So then, like, how does he do that? How does my brother-in-law do it? His name's, my brother-in-law's name is Lewis. So, like, how does Lewis, how did he, like, share with his friend? And as I was talking to my sister about it, it was like, he just knows the value of making space for people in his life. He wasn't, he didn't go on this vacation being like, I'm going to shove Jesus down his throat and he's going to come back knowing Jesus. Like that wasn't his, that's never in his intention. It's, he just was genuinely his friend as they were working out. Cause that's what they like to do. And as they were like eating good food and hanging out and talking, they talked about life and relationships and probably goofy things too. Like it's just all the things that you talk to your friends about is what they were doing. And during that time, Lewis shared what God was doing in his life. He was like, yeah, this is what I'm learning. This is how I'm growing. And, and that's, his friend saw it and wanted that as well. Like he got to know Jesus just because Lewis shared his life with him. He made space for a friend and that friend got to know Jesus and it's incredible. And that's something you guys can do too. That's an easy way to just love the people around you. So that in your school, in your practices, there are people that are lonely. There are people that are wishing that someone would come to them and care for them. Community is something that is a, a fundamental human need. We all have this deep, deep, deep longing inside of us to be known, loved, cared about, like good or bad, that we know that people will have our back. And so you, what if you could be that person for someone else? What if you could be that person that's just the consistent, good or bad, you're here for them? Imagine how much difference that could make. Um, that's what our goal of 30 churches by the year 2030 is all about. We want to make space for people to get to know Jesus, to get to know him better. And I will say the temptation often that I find in myself and I've seen is that one, we, we all have this longing to be known and loved, but we also, we want our people. We often want like, okay, I just want like my person. I want my squad that I know loves me, cares for me, is gonna be there for me that I can do life with. But the temptation is that once we have those few people, we often close the group. We're like, okay, I've got my squad now, I'm good. I got my people, we don't need anybody else, we're fine. But multiplication says that I will always make room at the table for one more person. Always, one, like if someone else needs a spot, I'm, like, I'm pulling up a chair, I'm gonna make space. I'll pull up another table if we need to, like we are gonna make space for them. Multiplication tells us that there is, we are always gonna make room in the kingdom of God for one more person. We're always gonna make the time for one more person to get to know Jesus. The church historically, I'm not gonna just say real life church, but like the church as a whole has not had the best track record with this. I don't know how familiar you guys are with church history, but if you start looking into it, it's, it's a messy place. We have not done a good job of loving people in the church. We have not done a good job of loving those outside of it. But what if your guys' generation was the one to change that? What if your guys' generation was the one that was known from seeing people right where they're at, whether they're at the highest point of their life or the lowest of lows? What if your generation was the one that was like, man, those people, they see others. They see them and they care about them and they make space for them in their life. I think that, that would change the world. 
like I would I'm so excited to see <laughs> the next 10 years because you guys man you guys give me hope you guys give me so much hope for the future um, so I want to leave you with this one question who in your life is God calling you to invest in who in your life is God calling you to invest in is it your friends? Is it a person that doesn't hang out with you guys? Is there someone that you've seen at recess that sits alone? There's someone you've seen outside when we come in that sits alone. Who in your life has, is God calling you to invest in? Let me pray for you guys. Hey, Jesus, thank you so much for your love for us, Lord. Thank you that you are our healer and our um, protector. God, I uh, thank you that we get to do life with you, that you don't leave us alone to do it by ourselves. Um, Jesus, I just ask that you show up in each one of these students' lives this week, um, this month. Uh, thank you, God, that we get to celebrate more people getting to know you today at Beach Baptisms. I just ask that you give each one of the students courage and bravery to step out in a new way this week and be generous or multiply. In Jesus' name, amen.